Hello, my name is Matt, and in this video, we're going to be looking at how you can get the absolute path to the script being executed in Shell. Just before we start the video, I just want to say that this is part of a post that I'm going to be making on my website. So if you're interested in looking at this transcript or all the commands that we're going to be using in this video, please check out the link in the description. It will help me out quite a lot. So let's let's get started, shall we? So I, I can actually think of uh, many, many reasons uh, as to why you want you may want to get the path to the script being executed in, in Shell. And you can do, you know, if you're doing things like automating pipeline scripts or uh, just creating scripts to help you out with, with I don't know, housekeeping, such as moving files around, uh, deleting directories in the same <laughs> directory as the, the, the script. You know, it, it may be helpful to know exactly where the script is located so you, you, you don't get anything wrong and, and mess up your, <laughs> your file. An example in this tutorial, just to have some context, uh, let's suppose that we want to create a script that will unzip all of the zips located in the same directory as the current script. Okay, so we can we could do it. We could do this manually, sort of like this. So if we're in the same directory, if you run this command here, it, it will simply unzip all of the zip files that we've got uh, in, in in this directory. Okay, but let's say we wanted to to do a script that will will just do that for us. Okay, so we will find where this script is located and it will also unzip all of the zip files in the same directory as our script. Okay, so whether we're running it from from the same directory as the script or from a different directory, it should do. Uh, what we expect to do, which is to unzip all these files here and store it in the same directory. This can be, you know, quite tricky if you don't actually know how to get the location to your script. But hopefully with this this video, we it's going to make things clear. OK, so um, long story short, we're going to be using two variables, dollar uh, sign zero or this one here, bash source. OK, so if you don't know dollar sign zero, which is this one here, uh, this will contain the first argument used to execute the, the, the script or the command in, in bash or in whatever shell environment you're, you're running it from. And in bash derived shells, I guess, a bash source contains uh, some information about the call stack, but more specifically the uh, the zeroth element here in the array, because this is actually an array, we will always contain um, the current executing script, okay? Uh, in, in other words, the, the relative path to it, okay? So let's just have a, a quick look at, at what it actually is. Let's just look at the man page for bash and look for bash source here. Okay, so we can see here that it does have an explanation. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's quite complicated, but let, let's read it anyway. So a bash source is an array variable whose members are the source file names where the corresponding shell function names in the func name array variable are defined. The shell function func name i is defined in the file bash source i. This is quite important here once you understand what, what func name actually is. Okay, but uh, you know, if you read it for the first time, this, this means nothing to you because it didn't to me either. Uh, but after looking out, looking at uh, what func name is in, in this man page here, uh, you realize that this, this func name contains information about the call stack, the, the functions being executed currently in your in your call stack, in your script call stack. Okay. Uh, more specifically, uh, func name zero, which is the, the first element of it, is always going to contain the main function uh, if you were to think about this in a, in a uh, programming manner. So the corresponding bash source zero here variable will always contain the file where that function is defined, which is the uh, current executing script. Okay, so the, the main takeaway is that bash source zero contains what we want, the path to the script. Okay, and we can look at the differences by actually writing a, a little script that will, will show um, both these values, and we, we can see what what they do. And I'm actually going to be uh, executing this from bash because I know most of you will probably be on bash, so most people can understand. And let's create a script that will show those two values. Um, and let's just simply um, write an echo here that will show, you know, dollar zero versus, uh, I don't know, bash sauce. All right. Uh, I know the bash sauce is defined as an array, but in in bash, instead of doing in calling it like an array, oops, calling it like an array like this, which this is what you'd write if you want to access a particular element. Uh, if you just leave out the square brackets here, uh, and zero, it will basically get the uh, the first element in that array. It's just a, a nice syntactic sugar that we have in, in, in bash. Okay. So let's save this uh, and uh, let's make an executable so we can call it. And if you don't know what this means, it basically lets your file be called like a like an application essentially from from the, the directory here. So we can call it like this. Okay. So if we do call this file, if we execute it in batch, what do we get? We get the dollar zero value is you know show paths shell, which is the relative path to our script and the bash source variable is the same thing okay so in this case it doesn't there's no differences okay uh, however 
dollar zero does change in in different ways of, of, of calling scripts uh, one of the examples is if you source it if you source this script um if you source show paths here and for those who don't know sourcing basically is just a different way of calling a bash script uh where all of the exported variables if you've got any of them in the script they will be kept in the session essentially and then a, a few other differences as well but don't worry too much about what it is it's basically just a different way of calling a script so if you source that we can see that the dollar zero value here does change now so it's it's a little weird isn't it it says bash and the, the bash source you know is still the relative path here to our our script show path.shell so you can see that dollar zero is not very reliable in certain certain cases and in fact it, it changes even more if, if we execute the script from z shell so show paths here uh, you can see that dollar zero is defined in in, in z shell as as expected because it's it's a shell uh, environment but bash source is not and the reason for that is obviously it's, it's, it's bash source it is a bash variable and z shell is not really bash but what's interesting is that this is empty and it's i would say it's a little bit better than having a just a random value here because then you know that the variable isn't set and you can do some logic around it if you, if you really need to so what's the most reliable way of getting the uh the script the, the path to the, the current uh, running script well i'm going to show you here in a, in in a one-liner command how i would do this okay so so if I was writing a, an automation script, uh, the first thing I would actually do here to avoid any weirdness going on from you know running your, your bash script in a different shell environment, such as Z shell, as I've got, is add that shebang here. And the, the very first line here basically says, you know, if, you, if you're calling this script from a terminal, make sure you run it with bash if it's available, all right? And let's, let's scrap that and let's actually write the particular line that we want here. So let's say the, the path, to this script is and then this is this is the important bit so here we're either going to get bash source if it's defined okay or if it's not defined we're going to get the value of dollar zero all right and this will behave fairly consistent in whatever script you're writing in most of the uh, shell environments that you may may come across and we can see if it works so let's let's call, let's say show paths oops so you can see here that the path to the script is show paths. And if we source it from Z shell, what do we get? Again, show paths. Now, if you go into bash and call the script, what do we get? We get something expected. And then if we source it, we also get the, the correct path. Okay. So why does this work better than, than it did before? Well, it's very easy to explain, actually. So what we're doing here is essentially saying, you know, if, if bash source is defined, then we print the value out. Okay, but if it's not defined, we get the value of dash zero. Okay, and because bash source is more reliable in most cases when it's defined, such as when you're sourcing it from a, a bash uh, terminal, it will just get the value of that. Uh, so if you're in Z shell, for example, and bash source is not defined, it will get the value of dollar zero, which you know is somewhat reliable in in in, certain, in in most cases, but unreliable in others. Okay, so this is how I would get the uh, the path to the current script in in a shell. Uh, script okay so we can actually use this to actually write finish writing our unzip script okay so what do we need to do well firstly we need to obviously get the um the path to, the, to our script with like this and then the next thing we do i mean this is this is going to give us the the absolute path to the script uh sorry the the relative path to the script as you as you've seen in the, the examples we're going to need to get the absolute path to it all right and this variable here, abs script path, contains the absolute path, and the way it works is by calling real path. And if you've not come across this before, uh, this tool essentially just gets the uh, the absolute path of a relative uh, path that you give it in Linux. And obviously, it's using the uh, the script path that we defined before here. And then the final step is to actually get the the directory, the the paths to the uh, directory that we the, the script is in. Okay, and we can do this with this. Again, this works by, you know, storing the value of this command here in their path. And the command is dear name. Again, that's a, another very useful tool in, in, in most Linux distributions. It will get the uh, the directory in which the file is located, which is what we want here, right? And, uh, you know, the icing on the cake is obviously to write that unzip command like this. This here is the, the final command, which basically says, you know, whatever zip files that I've got in their path, which is the directory of my script, I'm going to unzip it and I'm going to store all of the 
outputs all of the extracted files in their path, okay? So what does this do? Well, let, let's run it from the same script and let's see. So if you run this, it basically, you know, extracted all of the uh, the zips that we've got. You know, some dir1 comes from some zip1 and some dir2 likewise comes from some zip2. So it did what we expect, right? It, it unzipped everything in, in this directory. Uh, so let's remove it and run it from a different directory. Let's run it from a different directory. In, in this particular case, I'm using actually bash. So you can see that it, it should work both ways. <laughs> so if we call that uh, script there and then it was called show paths, wasn't it? The name is a bit misleading because it actually unzips stuff. But if we if we call that, you, you see that it, it has uh, unzipped the um, the zip files inside uh, script there. If you look at here, okay. Oops, uh, here, as we expected, okay. And hopefully this video is going to help you out. And hopefully if you still have any questions, if you still have any suggestions, post in the comment. Uh, if you want to copy and paste all of the the commands that we've used here, uh, check out the link in the description. It will it will be a link to my my post, and I'll certainly appreciate it. So yeah, thank you very much, and bye bye.